to the medieval period. Along with merchants and missionaries, many Buddhist painters also traveled to Myanmar. Here, thousands of great pagodas were being built by King Anirudh in the 11th and 12th centuries in Bagan. Exquisite mural paintings which are closely similar to the beautiful Pala manuscript paintings were made on the walls of these pagodas. Jainism flourished in India at the same time as Buddhism. Besides Buddhist paintings, the other great stream of paintings which flowed in India through many centuries was that of the Jains. A severe famine in the 5th century AD threatened to break the chain of oral transmission of Jain teachings. At this time, vast numbers of manuscripts were written to preserve and to continue the beliefs and the canons of the Jain faith. Large numbers of painted manuscripts continued to be made thereafter through the entire medieval period. Jainism is divided into two sects, the Digambar, sky-clad, and Shvetambar, white-clad. The large majority of illustrated texts were made by the Shvetambar sect. Since times immemorial, the Jain community has been known for its prosperity and trading activities. Jain merchants were amongst the most prosperous and wealthy in India. They were the great patrons of art and temple building. They generously sponsored the making of large numbers of painted manuscripts as it was believed that they would gain merit by commissioning these sacred works. Early Jain manuscripts, unlike the Buddhist ones, generally illustrate the accompanying text. The Kalpa Sutra and Kalkacharya were the most popular manuscripts to be illustrated. The Kalpa Sutra describes the life of four important Tirthankars or Jain saints. The other popularly illustrated text, the Kalakacharya Katha is the tale of Kalaka. He was a monk who sought the help of foreign rulers to combat the evil monarch of his land. Interestingly, the foreigners are depicted with narrow eyes and braided hair, quite like Mongols. Here we see Queen Trishala, who will give birth to Mahavir, the great Jain saint. The embryo of Mahavir was miraculously transferred into her womb. On that night, she had 14 auspicious dreams. These dreams foretold the birth of Mahavir. We also see paintings depicting Harine Gameshi, who transferred the embryo from Devananda to Queen Trishala. Here we see Lord Indra in his heavenly court. It is he who had sent Harine Gameshi on this mission. In the 10th and 11th century manuscripts, 
we see both the naturalistic parlor style and the linear style of the Jains.